Well, the original Highwaymen, the five of them, met at uh, Wesleyan University. They got together, they recorded a few songs, a few albums. Uh, one decided to leave, so it became a quartet. Uh, then a couple of years later, two of them decided to go to law school. The founder of the group, David Fisher, wanted to continue the Highwaymen as a group, but he personally did not want to sing in it. Uh, David Fisher called us, asked us if we'd like to take over as the Highwaymen, and then we auditioned for a fourth, and uh, Mr. Personality up here won the job. So we became a quartet. We were fortunate, uh, as one of the top folk groups of the 60s, we still had a lot of contracts with uh, schools, mostly colleges, to do homecomings and concerts. And so that kept us working for another four years or so until folk music sort of went away and rock and roll became as big as it is now. But the Beatles did it, I think, in late 64. We mm -hmm. continued on with only a handful of other groups, which was the Kingston Trio, Peter, Paul, and Mary, the Brothers Four, and the Limelighters. So basically it was the five of us who were still doing the folk music of the 60s right up into the late 60s. We were the main group for some, we opened up for a lot. Uh, one of the, uh, the biggest groups that we opened up for was uh, the Supremes. And they, uh, they hired us themselves, they just paid us out of, out of their funds uh, because they wanted us to open for them. We opened for them, <clears throat> we opened for Woody Allen. Uh, Bill Cosby, we opened for Rodney Dangerfield, Tennessee Ernie Ford at the Indiana State Fair. Well, after the Highwaymen broke up, uh, another group was formed by uh, uh, Welling Jennings and uh, Chris Christopherson, Johnny Cash, and Willie Nelson. They decided they wanted to use the name the Highwaymen, so they did. But one thing they forgot to do was to ask our permission. <laughs> and so they formed the group, they called themselves the Highwaymen, they went on tour, they put out a whole bunch of albums and records under the name the Highwaymen. And the original Highwaymen, ta-da, we said, wait, you can't do that, we're going to sue you. And we sued them for using the name, but not for money. They said, well, what do you want? We said, well, we want to open for one of your shows as the Highwaymen. So I think Willie said, so the Highwaymen are going to open for the Highwaymen. I said, yeah. And so we did at the Hollywood Bowl. We opened for the Highwaymen. And they followed the Highwaymen <laughs> in the concert. <laughs> Uh, when I was in college, I used to go every Friday uh, to uh, these hoot nannies. They they'd meet in lofts in in uh, Manhattan, and we'd sit around and take turns singing folk music, and it just became the very popular. Kingston Trio, I think, started it all for all of us. They got together basically 1958 out at uh, Menlo State College in California. Two guitars and a banjo, striped short sleeve shirts, and they sang probably every folk song that had ever been written and a lot that they wrote themselves. And it was because of them that all of us got together. And I think even Peter, Paul and Mary and all the other groups that are yeah. still around would tell you the same thing. When the, our chance came, we said, well, we don't want to sing any of their songs. We want to sing our own. We want to sing different songs than they do. And we did. And that really started the folk era back in the late 50s and early 60s. And so we were fortunate to have a six and a half million selling record of Michael Rowe, The Boat Ashore, which is being sung around campfires around the world today. And I like that. Mm -hmm. We were doing a, a gig in Washington at the cellar door. After us was the Chad Mitchell Trio coming in. So uh, we did our show, and then we, we stayed, and the, and the Mitchell Trio, oh, they changed their name to the Mitchell Trio, by the way, because Chad was no longer with them. And this young, good-looking guy was taking his place, and uh, he gets up after our show, and we, we, we're jamming, and uh, he says, I, I, I want you to hear this, this new song I just wrote. It turned out that it was uh, Leave It On A Jet Plane. And he and said, who was that young guy? Well, he said, he said I, I, I'm, uh, I, I'm sending it around, I'm sending it around, but nobody seems to want it. The kid's name was John Denver. And uh, two years later, Peter, Paul, and Mary came out with a version of it, and it became a big hit. I think it sold 20 and million so, records. Yeah, and we were, we were <laughs> the first people to ever hear that song. I tracked Alan down through a number of sources in uh, Southern California and Las Vegas. Alan called me 45 years after we had been together, hadn't seen each other or talked to each other in 45 years. He called me as soon as I answered the phone. I knew who it was because of caller ID and I said, my friend, you can run but you can't hide. <laughs> he moved down here to Coconut Creek. I live in Boca Raton. We got back together and here we are. 
feels like we never left. It, that's true. It feels like we never were apart. When we first got together and started singing here in Florida, uh, I said, well, let's start with Michael and see, see what it sounds like. like we had just come out of the studio and been doing it our whole lives which basically we had I said well let's try cotton fields we did cotton fields we did gypsy rover and then we just started building a repertoire and here we are now hiring ourselves out to do these shows we have as much as a two-hour show put together already usually we do a half hour to 45 minutes uh, with a 15 minute break and then we'll come in and do another half hour 45 minutes and it's been great it's like we never left if somebody uh wanted to learn more about uh, Two Guys, uh, they could go to our website, twoguysharmony.com. They can see a number of uh, uh, songs that we recorded uh, in, in a studio, and uh, they can find out a lot about us. Our contact information is on there as well, uh, phone numbers and so forth. You know, I, I would love everyone to go see our website and listen to us now, <coughs> as opposed to a few years ago when we were doing this full time, uh, but that's how they can get a hold of us. Hallelujah.